So here, particularly, the adequate safeguards are required to protect the helpless employees and the situations of the insolvency and uh, bankruptcy of their employees. Also, the concentrate of the recovery of job, jobs. Are, why we are talking about a going concern? Why the it is a not a resolution? It is a resolution plan, not a recovery plan. Why the preamble clearly states once it is a recovery plan, it is ultimately leads to death of the company. And once it is a resolution plan, all the stakeholders will be happy, particularly the employees. Once the company is closed, where they have to go, where have to do the work, all these things is a problem. So that's why, right. as far as possible, the unit should be continued in the same lines as earlier promoters are continued. But at the same time, viability is also required. Otherwise, it eaten away, the losses are eaten away the capital of the company. Need for recovery of the jobs of employees, that so-called the human social capital from unviable to viable enterprise becomes essential. Actually, earlier, it is unviable. Now, being an IP, you have to turn, turn around. That is, you have to do the viable enterprise. Unviable to viable. That is the role of the, the insolvency profession. Okay. Whatever the act, whatever the code, and whatever the regulation, all these things are there. But you should have the that type of uh, skills that is a uh, managerial skills. That is required. One side going concern. Second side, the viability. So third side, you have to protect the workers as well as the employees. All these things have to be taken into consideration and accordingly you have to take the decision with the help of a committee of great ops or in certain cases, the adjudicating authority also. Rule of RP, IRP or RP liquidator. Sale is a going concern. It is relatively a concept of the company under changing, undergoing liquidation. Even liquidation also. Once you sell the property, once you sell the assets of the company as a going concern, the value maximization will happen. Once the value maximization is happening, then all the stakeholders will be benefited. Once we have stopped and sell, then the price, the fair market price of the particular unit or the liquidation value of the unit will the less amount we will get. Once the less amount uh, the liquidator is getting, then all stakeholders' amounts are may not be satisfied by the liquidator. So, under the legislative, under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, via amendment to Regulation 32, 32 clearly states, even in the liquidation also, the sale should be as a going concern. So once we are going for liquidation and bifurcate or division the asset and piece by piece, if you sell, then ultimately the company is in death condition. And all the stakeholders may not be happy, particularly the employees and the workers. These two people are very, very important for the economy. Otherwise, uh, the economy unemployment will increase uh, and the GDP growth will decrease. Once the company is uh, killing uh, by selling the part by part, part by part of the asset, uh, it is as good as the death of the company. Once the company is death, uh, second one is uh, the GDP growth will decrease, the unemployment will increase, next the uh, exports will decrease, all side effects are there. That's why right. being a liquidator or the IRP or RP, the primary responsibility is try the company as a going concern. But in almost all companies, say it may not be possible. May not be possible. If there is no activity, the machines are outdated, are redundant, and the machineries are usable only for scrap, then there is no other alternative. So here, 
the entrepreneurship the, the skills are also very much required to the IRP or RP or liquidator. Through this amendment, that is uh, the amendment uh, regulation 32, legislature ensured keep intact and achieve the ultimate aim and object of the fraud. Intact. Suppose if I have purchased one asset and tomorrow I am going to send that asset, uh, sell that asset and people will ask 50% discount. In such a scenario, if you tell me you start not using the asset uh, and later on uh, you know the whatever the dust and all these things, uh, still the price will be quoted less uh, than the real uh, value of the particular asset. So though this amendment the legislator has ensured uh, to keep intact and achieve the ultimate aim and object of the poll, maximizing the value of the corporate data, even after resolution fails. The corporate data is referred to the liquidation. Whether it is a liquidation or the resolution process, uh, CARP, try for going concern calls. Try for going concern calls. So the reasons uh, backing the going concern states uh, into the liquidation, value maximization. It is a common economic understanding that the some parts is better than uh, some of the parts. And uh, it is a virtue of the principle going concern value or generally excess value of the individual assets. If at all you sell the asset uh, as a whole and uh, split the assets uh, and uh, sell, uh, you may not uh, get a reasonable amount. The various assets are stitched together one. Then it is uh, useful to the ultimate buyer also. You stretch uh, the stitch it together, not bifurcate. Once you bifurcate, machinery one person, uh, land another person, uh, the furniture another person, then after that, uh, company is uh, death. Nothing is there. In that particular land, uh, the real estate people, they will uh, purchase and they will start the apartments. So, comes here the greater value than the assets of isolation. Isolation is a very dangerous side. Recognizing the various of adjudicating authorities how, in the past, allowed the sale of the corporate data uh, as a going concern for value maximization. This is a clearly spelled out in Gujarat NRE Coke Limited, the honorable NCLT, Calcutta Bench as a given. No, don't bifurcate it, don't split the assets. Uh, but they will stitch it together and sell that one. Then only the value will match. Try for the buying a selling is not uh, a, as easy as I told. But efforts are required. Efforts are required. For what purpose? To value maximization of the stakeholders. Maintaining timelines at the same time. Don't drag on. Once you drag on the issue, then automatically the value of the asset may deteriorate also. The liquidator may find it difficult to complete a sale of the assets. That is true. I'm not talking about it is very easy. Of the corporate data, piece by piece, in a stipulated one-year period. In a one-year period, if you split that uh, piece by piece, uh, the time lag, time delay will uh, take more than one year. To finally make an application dissolution provided under Section 54, it may result in the failure and fulfillment of a one key object of the enactment of IBC is a timely completion of the proceedings. Once you sell the property as a whole, one lot, one bullet, the one lot, then automatically you will get good results. Once you split into that, uh, it will take time. You may not complete that uh, total process uh, within a uh, one year, a short span of time. The only reasonable construction of the code is uh, the balance to be maintained between timely completion of the corporate insolvency resolution process and the corporate data are otherwise being into put in liquidation. Timelines are very, very important. That's why in the 
preamble also clearly told time value of the money. Once the delay is there, the value of the money will be deteriorated on account of inflation, particularly the assets. Particularly real estate, uh, it may grow also. But plant and machinery today, the technology fast obsolescence. To a yesterday, technology may not be there today. In that scenario, if at the latest developments are there, even cars today, people are uh, selling, uh, they were, by, if at all they want to sell the car, particularly the petrol or diesel, somewhat difficult when compared to the electrical cars. So here, we must not forget that the corporate data consists of uh, several employees, workmen, whose daily bread is dependent on the outcome of the CIR. They are always looking uh, whether the company is uh, they are going to split or they want to continue. Once continue, they felt very happy because uh, their bread and butter is uh, the company. Once uh, the company is running, their stomach will be filled. Once the company is not there, their starvation will be there. So we have to see from the employees and the workers' point of view also as an IRP or a RP or a liquidator. Even the liquidation also, we have stretch and sell, not piece by piece. The Bankruptcy Law Reforms Committee also BLRC report has also recognized going concern say GCS is an effective method of the realization of asset and stated the viewpoints of the creditors. A good realization can generally be obtained. The firm sold as a going concern. The realization will be better once the product as a whole, if you sell, suppose I take for example, some people are interested to purchase the land. Some people, they are ready to purchase, purchase the building. But who will purchase the missionary? If at all the missionary is outdated, who will purchase? So all these things are to be taken. If at all some people, I am preferring this asset, I am not preferring this asset. If you sell, later on this asset may not be sold. So that's why the Bankruptcy Law Reforms Committee in this report also Recognize a going concern, say, as an effective method of realization of asset and stated with the viewpoint of creditors and a realization of assets and stated the viewpoint of the good realization generally be obtained as a going concern. In uh, why Shiva Ram Prasad and uh, Dhanapudi and others uh, applied the authority order during the liquidation process. A step is required to be taken to revival of the continuous of the corporate data by protecting the corporate data from the management of the, from the death of the liquidation. That is the role of the, the particular liquidator. You should not uh, kill the company. We have to survive the company, even in the liquidation process also. Okay. In the CIRP, the resolution plans have not come out. One small example I am quoting here. One small example that is not related to IBC. I am a banker. One pharma unit came because they are they are not uh, they are functioning properly and they defaulted. It is a tornado non-performing asset. And the space, the location is a good location. Building also in good condition, plant and machinery, nobody is interested to take. Then I have given the, uh, the advertisement, uh, particularly in the pharma city of uh, that particular place, where uh, the promoters are there, pharma promoters. Immediately, that uh, the advertisement catched their minds and uh, instantly they purchased. If at all, I sold the piece by piece uh, as per Surface Act 2002, then ultimately the company is dying, death, then uh, the employees will be retrenched or whatever uh, they lo uh, lost their jobs and the GDP growth will ha not happen. 
and the government uh, they will not get any taxes by way of gst and other things the or uh, the corporate tax also all these things are side effects are there as early as possible the company should be survived either hook or and the steps are which are required to be taken as follows we can by compromise or arrangement with the creditors or the class of creditors or the members of the class on failure the liquidity is required to steps to sell the business of the going concern in totality along with the employees along with the employees and workers that is the good decision to be taken by the insolvency professionals the last stage in the death of the corporate data by liquidation which is should be avoided that is to be avoided that will not contribute anything to the economy so if you see the facts and figures because every chief ship you are before going into the particular case these are facts we have to know earlier i have jot down some figures that is a 2021 okay the same percentage will continue the quarterly news rate one good uh, the this one is we have to read the quarterly news of uh, ibpa that is a very good uh, news letter every quarter they will uh, highlight one topic on that particular topic uh, whatever the developments are there they are giving in that quarter news not only that one in that quarterly news letter either fifth or sixth page only one and a half page the important judgments of nclt important judgment of nclat important judgment that are there in high court or supreme court all are available with only one paragraph with four or six sentences four or six sentences so that's why right. the quarterly newsletter please have a look every month even gold also it is a gold in my view that newsletter is also very useful because uh, i have taken one data rough data 2021 138 cases are closure 128 are liquidation that is a 92.75 closed by dissolution and six are going on concern sale and a two point compromise and arrangement the cases of closure by going the concern sale claims to 4325.61 crores against the liquidation value 290.03 so once you taken that 30 10 cases the value remaining 128 cases the value 290.03 because even though it is a 2021 data that is not a, a matter but even if you take today also the liquidation value is meager when compared to the compromise or the cirp cases the liquidation in these uh, cases are uh, 339 crores companies were rescued therefore rightly said that uh, going forward going concern sales can be important tool for uh, value preservation here i miss him means uh, not only the rules the regulations uh, whatever is there you have to implement at the same time you are the ceo of the of the defunct company of the defunct company and whatever the managerial skills are there to retain the company to continue the company to continue as a growing concern company to value maximize and to safeguard the interest of the workers and the employees along with the assets now come come to Let's just say ABG Shipyard Limited. Wages are salaries inclusion as a CIRP cost. Ten conditions. If at all it is a series of going concern, 
and the second one is actually work during the CAR. Previous salaries are different. 24 months or 12 months is different. The wages and the salaries inclusion as a CIRP cost. That is on 10 conditions. To be satisfied, that is, uh, seeding is a going concern and they actually work, uh, work at it during CIR. If at all people are coming and uh, no work is there, it is a burden to the company. And the value, the whatever the, uh, the uh, particularly the unnecessarily, the company is paying salaries. That's why no work, no pain. That is the judgment given by the Honorable Supreme Court in ABG Shipyard. So the wages and the salaries, uh, whatever you are paid during CARP process, if at all it is a going concern, it is to be treated as a CARP cost. Before commencement, that is a 24, liquidation 24 or 12 months, that is a different one. But it in conditions are to be satisfied. A significant judgment was passed by Honorable Supreme Court in 2022. In the matter of Sunil Kumar Jain and other versus Sundaresh Bhatt and others. In that particular case, they have clearly given where the Supreme Court has clarified the complexities that are arose in the claim of a payment of a wages and salaries. Before corporate resolution process, during CARP, in the liquidation of the corporate data. These are the three stages. Whatever the wages are there, whatever the salaries are there, you have to split into the three areas. Three sub uh, areas. One is uh, before CARP, during CARP, in the liquidation of the corporate data. Brief background of the case. The National Company Law Appellate Tribunal dismissed an appeal preferred the workmen and employees of a Mrs. ABJ Shipyard, the corporate detail, taken as the NCLT orders. So the appellate of that NCLT, they go dismiss. And whatever the order given by the NCLT, denying the relief to them with regard to the claim relating to the salary for a period involving CARP and the prior, prior, prior to that date. So denying relief to them with regard to the claim relating to salary for the period involving the CARP and the prior that brief background. Agreed by the said order, the workmen or employees preferred appeal before Honorable Supreme Court in the ABG shipyard. Issue is the issue dealt with the respect to wages and salaries of the workmen and employees during CARP period. Actually, during CARP period, if the company is a going concern and giving results and taking the services of the workers and I am using the workers in a better manner and they are not sitting idle, then there is no problem to pay the salaries. Otherwise, during CIRP, the wheel of the company is not rotating and the workers are sitting idle, then it is not good. And the amount due and payable to the respective workmen towards the pension, gratuity, and provident fund. These are two issues. One is uh, during CARP process, if the wages and salaries are there, how to account for? Second point is whether the workmen employee, workmen or employees uh, pension or gratuity or provident fund, whatever it is there, 
that is not comes under the purview of the CIRP process. That is not a, that is a, the trust is that amount or not uh, to be used for a distribution. Now we will go into the contentions. What are the contentions? The appellants, that is the workers and employees, contended that the salaries and wages and dues payable to them during CRB will be qualified for CIRP cost under section. 5 subsection 13 of the IBC and are liable to be dispersed even prior by amount distributed to section 53 of the IBC. So their contention is like that. Before the waterfall mechanics, first they are asking about the whatever the work command employees contention is that the salaries and wages dues payable to them during CIRP period will be qualified for CIRP cost under section 5 sub section 13 of the IBC to be dispersed even prior to the amount distributed under the section 53 of the IBC. That is the important point. What is section uh, 5 of section 13? Under section 5 of section 13 of the code, that is called insolvency resolution process cost. They have de clearly defined. You include the interim finance cost and the cost incurred raising finance and the resolution plan identify the specific source of funds that is used to pay the insolvency resolution cost. So, Whenever the RB is finalizing the resolution plan, first he has to see whether the insolvency resolution process cost is going to be paid by the prospect to resolution applicant or not. Why? Because that is already incurred. That is to be reimbursed. If at all workers are there during the period, they have, they, if at all they work with the, to the organization or employees to the organization, that is to be reimbursed. What is the 53 distribution of receipts? That is a waterfall mechanism. 53 subsection 1, not withstanding anything contrary contained in the law enacted, by the parliament or state any legislator for the time being in force, the process from the sale of the liquidation shall be distributed in the following order and priority within the such period in a such a manner specified. <laughs> Section 53, subsection 1 clearly states how to distribute. What is the first priority? What is the second priority? What is the next third priority? What is the next priority like that? Once the amount is received, that is to be accounted for as per the section 53 subsection, say 53 of the distribution of assets. Within that, what is that one first point of A is the insolvency resolution process and the liquidation process paid in fuel full. The total amount to be reimbursed. Once the sale of the assets is happened, or any amount is realized, the first appropriation is the CIRP cost or liquidation cost. For the following, they shall equally rank equally between among the following. Workman dues for 24 hours preceding the liquidation. Debts to the secured creditor, even, uh, even uh, secured creditor as a relinquished is a security like that. Next, uh, wages and unpaid own employees, other than workman, particularly employees. Employees are means who are working in the administrative office. The wages are to be paid to the workers who are working in the production department. 
12 months of pressuring and the financial debts are unsecured. That is also Parifasu based on the particular the ratio you have to split that amount and accordingly pay that amount to them. And the section 53 1E the following dues shall rank equally between among the following. Any amount the due of the central government and the state government including among the received account of consolidation fund in of India and the consolidation fund of the state, the whole or part for two years preceding the liquidation commencement, that is also to be paid. Liquidation commencement preceding two years, whatever the central government or state government dues are there, that is to be paid. Debts to the secured creditor for any amount unpaid following the enforcement of security. If a surplus is available, whatever the leftover amount is there to the secured creditor, that also to be paid. And any remaining dues, after that, if still uh, surplus is available, the preference shareholders, if a surplus is available, then only the lost uh, equity share. But in the meantime, the company has also to be recovered. Whatever the unpaid share capital is there, if the company is offered shares on uh, installments, and if shareholders are paid for only first installment, second or third installment, recover that amount, then only they, the, they are eligible for uh, contribution. Otherwise, they are not eligible. Next, uh, any contractual agreement between recipients under subsection 1 with equal rank, if a distribution order of the priority, that sub subsection shall be disregarded or ignored by the regulator. If at all any agreements are there, arrangements are there, that is a null and void. This formula is applicable. Even though the equal rights are there, within the rights, this person first, that person later on, that type of any arrangements are there, that is not applicable. And the fees payable to the liquidator, particularly deducted from the proportionately from the process payable to each class recipients and proceed relevant recipient shall be distributed after such a distribution. Proportionately, so whatever the fees we are paying to the particular liquidator, it should be paid proportionately. The fees payable to the liquidator shall be deducted Proportionately from the process of payable each class, <laughs> he should not recover the total amount. Once he paid, proportionate amount to be as a bag of whatever the commission or fees. Explanation. For this purpose, it is hereby clarified that each stage of distribution process in respect of a class of recipient rank equally, in which either be full or paid or equal proportion within the same class proceed or insufficient to meet the debt in full. The term workman dues have the same meaning as assigned in the 326 of the Company Act 2003. Workman dues means that is clearly defined in Company Act also. Under 326 of the company said, the same is applicable here also. Contentions. It is further submitted that the provident fund and the gratuity and pension remain outside the liquidation. That is true. Because once every month, it is deducted and amount is set aside, either provident fund or pension fund or gratuity fund, that should not be the part of the liquidation process. So it is submitted that the provident fund, gratuity and pension fund remain outside the purview of the liquidation. Section 34, subsection 4, 
the liquidator shall file the asset memorandum along with the preliminary report to the adjudicating authority. In the similar section 36 of 5 also, the asset memorandum shall not be accessible to any person during the liquidation unless permitted by the adjudicating. So the asset memorandum we should not disclose it to every person. So during unless uh, until it is uh, permitted by the adjudicating authority. On the other hand, the respondent is contended that the wages and salaries, first 1.2 points are there in the ABJ shipyard. The first point is uh, clarified. That is, a, uh, it is a uh, particularly section 36, subsection 4 of IBC. The provident fund or gratuity or pension fund outside the liquidation, we should not touch that fund. That is uh, managed by trustees. Trustees of funds uh, are not to be touched by the insolvency professional uh, in the liquidation process. Because every month they have deducted from the salaries and allowances of the employees or workers and the uh, amount is uh, set aside. That amount uh, we should not uh, touch. So one point is uh, clarified. What is the second point? Whatever the wages or salaries are there during CARP process or the liquidation process, that is to be paid as first. That is the contention of the employees or the workers in the ABG shipyard. On the other hand, the respondent contended that the wages and salaries are claimed by appellant who have done no work during CIRP have not assisted the resolution professional or the liquidator during CIRP or liquidation would not fall within the argument of the CIRP. That is uh, the point. Once they have not worked, they have not given any contribution during the CIRP process, even though the firm is undergoing consent, but these people's services are not utilized by the company, either in a CIRP or liquidation, once it is paid, it is against the law. No work, no pay. So the definition, of a section uh, 5 subsection 13 of uh, clause C of IBC. Section uh, 5 subsection 13 C clause, any cost incurred by the resolution in running the business of the corporate as a going concern. Once that is there, then only they are eligible. Otherwise, uh, once they have not worked uh, and no productivity, and simply coming and sitting and demanding the salary during CIRP or liquidation, that is not allowed. That is a contention of the, particularly the IRP or <laughs> summary of the judgment. Wages and salaries only workmen and employees who actually work during the CIRP are to be included. That is the judgment. So, whenever in the liquidation or during CIRP process also, if at all you are going to incur the CIRP cost and particularly the workman salary or employees salaries, whether they are working or not, that is to be ensured by the insolvency resolution process. I have seen in Hyderabad, in a real estate company, who is under, uh, which is under a CIRP process, the IRP removed 50% of the employees. Sorry, there is no business. 
we don't require any stuff. Sorry for this. If at all that is continued, then how he will satisfy the stakeholders? It is a loss to the economy. That's why no work, no way. That is a judgment given by the Honorable Supreme Court of India in the ABG shipyard case. The Honorable Supreme Court is referred the following projects of IPC. Simply they told the judgment is like this. But under what circumstances they have given? The Honorable, the unobserved that uh, when considering the claims of the concerned workmen or employees, Towards the wages and salaries payable during CARP. First of all, it has established a proof that during CARP, the corporate data is a going tax. Once you are going to pay the CARP cost during CARP or the liquidation, as a first priority, you have to see whether the company is undergoing concern or not. If there is no concept of going concern, the wheels of the particular industry or the business is not moving, then paying that amount is not not legally acceptable. And the companies are actually work. While corporate data is a going concern, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, that is it to be paid. No question. Once the company is not running, staff is coming, and they are using the attendance and payroll, and the attendance and the biometric system. And sitting idly in the production department, sitting idly in the administrative department, which is not, not, not good. So here, and observe that while concerning the claims of the concerned workmen or employees towards the wages and salaries payable during CARP, first of all, it has established a proof that during CARP, the corporate data is a going cost. So first, you have to ensure by paying the CARP cost, particularly the wages and salaries uh, of the workers and employees, uh, first, you have to see if at all it is not a going concern. What is the fun in paying the temple? And workmen employees are actually working while the corporate data is a going concern during the CAR. The summary of the judgment is particularly the ABG shipyard company. Wages and salaries are only to workmen or employees who actually work during CARP are to be included in the CARP. Only those costs are to be included, not uh, simply include means uh, we should not include uh, Without uh, taking the, without extracting any work from them. Therefore, the two-step formula have been evolved by the Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court of India. An exclusion has been evolved where the wages and salary of other men corporate data who actually have not worked and are performing duties of thus as a going concern and shall be included automatically in the CARP cost. Once they have not worked, they are not interested to work, and they simply they are coming and sitting idle and paying their salary during CARP or during liquidation, if at all you are identified as a going concern. First going concern, followed by next, whether a necessity is there or I have seen, I am the eyewitness in one real estate company in Hyderabad that is recently, that is under CARP, I'm going to be completed shortly. 
resolution plans are submitted and uh, there are resolution plan that uh, the RP is uh, not only the I had a RP, he is a manager, he is an entrepreneur, he is a particularly skills of a management, all these things are there. First, he has taken the list out of the employees in which department, what is their role. And he is verified with the HR department also. While recruiting the people, what is the role design? And the earlier department where he works based on the service files, then one by one, one by one, one by My voice is audible, sir. PPT is visible. Sir, my voice is audible and PPT is visible. Sir, we lost your voice. Sir? Now we sir. can hear you. Now, sir, now, it hear you. Is, uh, sir, now it is visible and audible. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Some Thank disruptions, you. but now okay. Ah, okay, sir. So here, that uh, insolvency profession, that is a uh, resolution profession, he got the files of a service files of all the employees. And what is his role in the organization? After defunct, after CIRP, whether that role is required or not. If not required, simply put a pram and a, sir, we don't require your services. Otherwise, continue the company going means not. A, in, uh, they're not at the cost of the company. We should, uh, going concern means uh, the company should get, uh, get uh, generate revenue. Without a revenue, if at all, uh, I have taken all uh, white elephants and they are sitting and shorting, then uh, it is uh, not uh, good on the part of the professions. That is same thing happened. Nearly 50% drive four cars are there. For what purpose? Four cars. Marketing or whatever he not drive four cars for marketing. Okay, I am allowing one month. If at all the sales are not, then I will remove some salespersons also. Even though it may be the harsh. It may be harsh for them, for the employees or the way the workers, but we have to satisfy the stakeholders. We have to generate some surplus. Otherwise, I should not run the company as a lost company. So the summary of the judgment is wages and salaries are the workmen and employees who actually work during the CEO. If at all they have not worked, that is not included in the CA for the wages and salaries are included in CARP will have first priority. That also Supreme Court of India categorically clearly defined. It is a part of uh, the uh, CARP cost. That too first priority. They are generating some income. They are converting the input into output. So we have to pay. Now, whatever before CARP or before liquidation, whatever the 24 months or 12 months is there, that is a, at the time of uh, appropriation of payments. That uh, we don't, we should not uh, touch it now. So, the, in the terms of section 53, subsection 1, clause A of IBC, or uh, on the wages and which are not included in CARP cost, shall be governed under the B under section C of the IBC.
what is the section 53 1a insolvency process and liquidation costs are paid in full the following debts shall rank equally workmen debts for a period of 24 months preceding debts of the secured creditor or wages of the other workmen all these things are already discussed by me it depends upon the facts of the each case another contention raised by the appellants was the rp is under mandate to manage the operation of the corporate data as a going concern and therefore it is to be believed that during carp corporate data was going managed by going concern the honorable supreme court observed that it depends upon the facts of each case cannot be presumed that a cd is a going concern during carp in all cases it is not a, a thumb rule it is a tailor made first we have to see suppose a marketing activity is not there suppose you take for example supervisors are there for the building construction once the building construction is not happening what is the role of a supervisor to verify the stages of construction the same was happened nearly 30, uh, 20 supervisors are there in the construction no activity no construction activity construction activity stands still then uh, supervisors uh, 20 people are there for what purpose these are supervisors once the construction is there then only supervisors that cleaning and all these things uh, in that particular construction activity once it is not there, we don't require that particular. That RP has taken a good decision from the company's point of view, not to incur further losses to the company. So here, he should be a businessman. But at the same time, he has to safeguard the interest of the workers and employees also. Simply remove the employees, remove the workers is not also good. So balanced approach is very much required. The decision should be a qualitative decision. So another contention raised by the appellant that the RP is undergoing mandated to manage the operations of the corporate as a going concern. And therefore, it is believed that CARP, the corporate data is a going managed by them. Supreme Court clearly told it is not a simply a thumb rule. It depends upon the case by case. We will, it is very easy also. If at all revenues are there and work productivity is there, then there is no harm to pay the salaries. If there is no work and no revenue and why the people are coming and going and month end during CARP process, uh, process uh, if the RP is paying the salaries, that is also not correct. Outright protection, provident fund, gratuity function, that is a statutory provision. The liquidator should not touch the term. That is the hard-earned savings. That is the forcible savings. That is a compulsory savings under various statutes. That is not to be attached. That is not to be touched. On the issue of the provident fund, the gratuity pension fund, Honorable Supreme Court noted uh, Section 36, uh, subsection 4, clause 3 of the I specifically excludes. We should not include. Because this is a trust amount on retirement, whatever the pension, whatever the gratuity, whatever it is, a terminal benefits of the employees or workers. All sums due to any workman or employee from the provident fund, the pension fund, or gratuity from the ambit of the liquidation of assets, and therefore. The liquidator shall not have any claim over such. We should not. The liquidator should not touch that funds. 
the liquidator should not touch the defects. This is in brief about uh, the ABC shipyard. And uh, here, being an uh, IRP or RB or the liquidator, whenever you are decided to continue the company as a going concern, you have to decide how much worker is required, how much employees are required, how much a security staff is required, how much a top management people are required in the administrative office. Because you are the chief executive officer of the defunct company. You have to run the company as a businessman, not a insolvency professional. That's why the production department is reported to you. HR department is going to be reported to you. Finance department is going to be reported to you. Marketing department is going to be reported to you. Or administrative department, operations, whatever the departments are there. All department, the functional organization, the functional organization directly reporting to the CEO of the company during CARP, that is none other than the IRP or part. Are you getting my point, sir? Sir, are you getting my point? Anybody, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We are getting your point. Yeah. Now, Whatever the judicial pronouncements of Supreme Court is there, that needs to be read once in one month or two months. Again, read, 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 read. Because uh, the law is evolving uh, based on the judicial pronouncement of the Supreme Court. And uh, some changes, regulations or code changes are happening. Uh, on account of a Supreme Court verdict. The Rainbow Paper Limited is also one of the such cases. But before going into the Rainbow Paper Limited case, being an IRP or RP, information memorandum is an important document. It is a marketing document. It is a profile or biodata of the defunct company, which is under a CARP process. So this is a profile, the biodata. All ought to be included. No exception. The facts and figures are true and correct. Based on the biodata, whether to purchase or not to purchase, whether to acquire or not to acquire, that is to be decision to be taken by, that decision is to be taken by none other than the prospective resolution applicant. So the information memoranda is one of the important documents in the CIRP process. Casual approach should not be there. Had I been there as an IRP or RP, once or twice, I will verify the information memoranda is prepared 100% correct, 100% all are included, whether all cases, litigations, claims, not only that one, about the future prospects of the company. Whether the company is a latest technology or not, what is the market share? All, all, all the, I will include in the particular information memorandum. So the information memoranda is one of the important one. No, we can't hear you. Ah, ah sir, sir, sir. 
So the information memorandum is very, very important. The document. So the information most important document of the corporate insolvency resolution process, which provides the preparing of the resolution plan. The GIGO concept is a garbage in, garbage out. Once the information memorandum is not up to the mark, the resolution plan is also not up to the mark, in my perception thinking. Once the document is clear, based on the document, the prospective resolution applicant definitely they will learn. provide that information. Once I told about my missionary latest technology or not, if at all I told her, the missionary means whether it is outdated or redundant, the buyer or prospective resolution applicant who is going to acquire, he is not having. This is a brand new, this is a latest technology. Even in the present technology also, this machine is useful. Then my value of the asset will increase. So the information memoranda provides the preparing the resolution plan consists of information of the corporate data internally, including the list of creditors. I should not leave it to anybody. I should include all the people. Some people, they may not have to claim, but in the balance sheet, it is reflected. What is the problem in reflecting in the, the information memoranda? Okay, I have not received it. But for the, the government Jews are there, government may not have seen that advertisement. That is a public announcement. What is the problem in mentioning in the information memoranda? So for prospective resolution applicant uh, may pay, may not uh, pay that amount. So all, that's why the balance sheet uh, or the profit and loss account or the financial statements of the particular company should be read, understand by the resolution professions. That's why if you see the LA examination, accounting ratios are there. Indian economy is there. Inflation is subject is there. SEBI guidelines are also there. Stamp duty is there. Registration Act is there. Why? It should be all grounded. Not only YBC. Sir, so, may I ask one question? Ah, sir, tell me, sir. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Sir, this ah, liquidation sir. value, uh, should it be given in the information memorandum, but it's confidential, you know, and the RP should not disclose this liquidation value. Correct, uh, correct, 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 correct. <laughs> sir, here, I'm ta take, uh, talking about uh, all the facts, uh, means uh, particularly the information Liquidation when liquidation value when it will arise in forced sale only. The mobile is uh, the present market value of this mobile is uh, hundred rupees example. I will mention in the fair market value hundred rupees. I will mention okay through bargaining or uh, if at all uh, instant sale happen uh, hundred will not get. That is a different issue. But uh, I have to mention hundred rupees only. So the related party, number of workers and employees and liabilities. What is the problem? Particularly workers. That type of workers may not be available. Particularly, this is a automated, this is a technology oriented company, production machinery. For that, trained workers are there. Once trained workers are there, the resolution applicant, day one, he will run the company without any hassles, hassle free. So, highlight whatever the best is there. That's why it is true and correct. So, it is a marketing brochure, it is a bio data of the company, it is a profile of the company, all to be reflected. Whether climbed or not climbed, climbed, you mentioned, not climbed, they, they may not see. Later on, they will uh, they climb and we will take the permission of the adjudicating authority whether to include or not. That is a secondary issue. 
and material litigations, contingent liabilities. The contingent liabilities are to be mentioned. Latest audit balance sheet, financial statement of loss for two years, provisional financial statement. It is not earlier than the 14 days from the date of application or liquidation. So, why I told all these things means rainbow paper mill. That is also one of the important uh, points. Information. During the CAERP, when the resignation professional is appointed, he has to perform duties as per section 29 of the code. He has to perform. The duties as per the 29 of the preparation of information memorandum. As per 29A, particularly the information document prepared by the resolution profession, which provides the details of the corporate data to assist the resolution plan, to formulate a resolution plan. Once, that's why I told about GIGO. Once I have given wrong information or inadequate information, or partial information, the resolution applicant, they will restrict that plan. I am not giving not more than this. To maximize that one, the transparency, the correct information, true information is required. The available legal framework of information memorandum with important provisions of the code under relevant regulations. Resolution plan. A resolution plan is a rehabilitation plan. True. Because the prospective resolution applicant, instantly he may not bring all the amount. Instantly, overnight, he will not change the company over a period of the time. This report is a base, prepared based on the information. So the correlation is there between the Resolution plan and uh, the information memorandum. That's why I told about a GIGO. Once the wrong information is there, or partial information is there, or inadequate information is there, uh, then automatically I will get uh, the not the correct resolution plans. And uh, targeting the legal, financial management, a technical strategy in order to bring the CD back to the feet at the address. That is the objective, that is the purpose of uh, the importance of uh, the information memoranda in the IBC process. In the CAERP, the credit are to be submitted claims within the time stipulated time in the public announcement. That is true. We shall not 14 days from the date of appointment of the IRP. That is regulation. And in case of liquidation, the creditors are required to submit their claims uh, within the time period stipulated by the public uh, 30 days. Both are stipulated. It doesn't mean uh, after that date they are not eligible. But subject to certain conditions, uh, they are eligible. If at all inordinate delay is there, why can't you brought to the notice of CBC? Why can't you brought to the notice of adjudicating authority in uh, important uh, cases? Whether IP can admit a claim after the period of submission of the claim is over, stated in the public announcement. Yes. A creditor who failed to submit the claim with the proof within the time stipulated in the public announcement may submit the claim with the proof IRP or RP 90th day. Okay, now. 14 days not submit. Okay, 90 days. But whatever the decisions are taken earlier, that is not to be reversed. It is a continuous process. Okay, it is. Once I have taken and admitted the claim, then the percentage of voting right the percentage, all these things will be changed. From that, whatever decisions are there on the revised voting rate pattern, not the earliest earlier decisions are not to be changed. Whether IRP or RP can be considered, these claims are appearing in the books of accounts of the corporate, but not submitted the claim. Yes. That's why I told. 
the IRP or RP should have the knowledge about the balance sheets or financial statement. Whether it is a trading account or profit and loss account or the balance sheet or the fund flow or the cash flow or the comparison. Some knowledge is required. Because you are the all-rounder. So the accounts submitted, yes, IRP or RP can consider the claims. Can also the proof of the claims of those creditors. When are the claims are there? You ask them proof, proactive approach. Particularly government, they may not see. Because we are giving public announcement one day, not daily. It may come across to the eyes of the particular climates, may not talk. Whether uh, he is reading that particular paper, uh, okay. Alternately, you are putting in the company's website or a designated place as identified by the IBPA. All these are alternatives are there. But uh, alternatives, uh, some people may not uh, see that uh, alternatives also. So that's why. Once it is uh, there in the books. Uh, excuse me, sir. May I put one question, please? Ah, sir. Well, uh, I've seen that, you know, the claims which are submitted beyond 90 days, they are also accepted, uh, you know, many a time. So what is the uh, end line for, uh, end, ending timeline for acceptance of claims? Ah, that is, uh, sir, here. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we are going to close the, uh, finalize the resolution plan also. At that moment also, some of the adjudicating authorities know you have to take into consideration like that. So it depends upon the judiciary, the judgment, or who is given the final judgment. But we have to follow our, the particularly the CARP guidelines as defined by IBBA. That's why I'm telling about the CARP is called an event management. Even liquidation also event management. PPIRP is also event management. Or the IE individual corporate the personal guarantor to individual management. And that's why in the regulation also, T plus one, T plus two, T plus twenty, T plus forty, the timelines are also given in the schedule. It is event management. All events have to be completed as per the rules or regulations or the code defined. Then our job is Good. Okay, sometimes uh, we have to honor the adjudicating authorities. But at the same time, we have to take the precautionary measures also. Suppose the government claim is not submitted. Sometimes a proactive approach is required. That is, uh, in the rainbow paper limited also, the adjudicating authority they highlighted that one. They highlighted that one. In Indian mythology, God may have the different forms. But in some, he is one and provide justice uniformly. In an iron biased manner, no matter how diverse the situation and the circumstances go. The Supreme Court is uh, the guardian of the constitution. They have to give the verdict or judgment. The unbiased, X or Y or Z or whatever the various uh, committees are there, benches are there. The judgment is similar. So the Indian mythology, God may have different forms. But in some, he is one and provide justice uniformly in an iron bias manner, no matter how diverse was the situation. That's the Supreme Court is a guardian of the country. Similarly, in India's judicial system, Honorable Supreme Court, the Apex Court, occupies the highest position 
of God. Equal to ultimate preservator. Because uh, whatever the lower courts given verdict, we can approach the his highest authority. We are approaching him. The apex court is a repository of justice. They are having uh, all uh, decided cases and through various benches is expected to consistence and justice delivery. Even uh, they are identifying, they are forming the benches also. In the benches also, the consistency is there in the judiciary. Despite variance in the facts, facts may not be similar. Facts may be differ. And in cases involved, however of late, it is observed that verdicts of different benches of the Honorable Sun variance with each other. It is a variance. But if you go through the case, both the cases, the points are different. Facts are different. The process is different. The acts are different. And by macro view, we are telling uh, both are one and the same, but why variance is given like that? That's why right. it depends upon case by case. In the Rainbow Paper Limited, the Apex Court wide verdict dated 6th September 2022 held that under sections 53 so and so so and so, debts owed to the secured creditor, which includes the state debts also. Whether it is a GST or value added tax, that also they are telling it is also secured creditor. We have to identify them as a secured creditor. Secured creditor means uh, not simply the given the collateral security like a land, building, plant and machinery, not like that. Even state Jews or central Jews are to be treated as secured creditors. For that, some rational is there. So that's why Supreme Court judgments rounds are twice. If at all your time is having or I'll say you can go through that one. Then you will find out the rational behind for each and every decision, and it is not a similar one. It is a different or rank equally with other specified debts, including debts on account of workmen dues, secured creditor, and workmen dues per as on day. But if the state government, a particular state taxes like a GST or this one, that is also to be treated as this. The above interpretation based on the Apex Court view, Section 48 of Gujarat Value Added Tax is not different or varying with the Section 53 of other provisions of the IBC. They clearly told the GVAT, the government, uh, the amount to be paid to the government, that is also to be treated as a security grid. But if you see the waterfall mechanism, in the waterfall mechanism, that is the government reduces loss. So, other provisions, the above interpretation therefore suggests. Section 238 disregarded the insolvency does not uh, supersede the secret. So whatever the prevailing acts are there, IBC is uh, supersede, but in this case, it does not supersede the GVT. How? That is not supersede. All these things we will discuss after lunch, uh, the tea break. Shall we take a 10 minutes of tea break, sir? Sir? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we okay. can take it. Okay, sir.
Shall I start now, sir? Hello. Sir, my voice is audible, sir. It is it is audible, ah, sir. Ah, okay, sir. Just a small point before you start. Yes, sir. There has been a, some ah, changes in the uh, claim of admission. One is with regard to the RFRP, before the issuance of RFRP, the claims have to be submitted, have to be completed. After that, if any claims are coming, then we, the RP has to file a, before the adjudicating authority for the list of claims which have come for admission. That is what correct. is the point. Correct. Correct. Correct, sir. That I agree, sir. That I agree. Now that point of 90 days and other things are uh, getting... Uh, ridden and off. It ah. is only the RFRP which is a time bound process. Then we have to do that. Correct, sir. Correct. The claim, oh. the claim, yes, any claims, they, it has to go to the adjudicating authority for approval. Approval, correct. And well, second thing is, uh, uh. and second thing is with regard to this yes, rainbow sir. judgment. One of the key factors is mm. what was left out in the IBC provisions when it was taken into consideration for 234. Mm. That is 238 when it was brought mm. in. Correct. It was not considered because uh, VAT was before 2016. Mm. So that point was missed out. That mm. is why this rainbow judgment has come into the play that GVAT mm. is uh, pre uh, precedent before the uh, IBC code. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise, GVAT uh -huh. wouldn't have come into that uh, point at all. <laughs> it's a miss by the government and that is the loophole which has been found out by the GVAT department. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh -huh. Sir, uh, we will discuss uh, whatever uh, the judgment has given. The above interpretation based on the apex court view is uh, section 48 of uh, Gujarat value added. All these things uh, I have di discussed. Now coming to next uh, slide. Point one. Section 238 of IBC provides that uh, IBC overrides the provisions of uh, any law that is inconsistent with IBC 2006. If at all it is an uh, inconsistency then only the IBC will provide. A demand notice issued by the customs authority seeking recovery of customs dues during moratorium would essentially mean initiation of a legal proceeding against the corporate data. That is point one. So the demand notice issued by the customs authority seeking recovery of the customs due during moratorium would essentially mean that is the initiation of a legal proceeding against the corporate data. The point two, on the other hand, different benches of Supreme Court in the case of uh, ABG shipyard, why it's a verdict dated August 26 uh, as held IBC would uh, overcome over the custom set. The two recent verdicts of the Apex Court therefore appears to be the variance in respect of a superiority of a IBC over other statutes. So these are the two points we will discuss in detail. The facts of the Rainbow Paper Limited case. Rainbow was involved in the business of a manufacturing and the sale of crafts or was within outside of the state of Gujarat. An amount of 53 crores 71 lakh 65,489 was due to the company, due from the company towards the sale tax authority on account of a CST and VAT libraries. On July 8, 2016, recovery proceedings began against the recovery uh, rainbow paper in respect of a uh, juice of uh, year 2011-12 uh, and its uh, property situated at uh, Rajpur Taluka Kadi was attached uh, 
on uh, October 8, 2018. In the meantime, Near as a paper private limited, one of the operational creator filed a, an application or petition under section 9 of the IBC at NCLT Ahmedabad pinch for initiation of CIRP against the company. Following which, September 12, 2017, the petition was admitted. The claims are invited from the Kratos under Section 15 of the IBC by way of a newspaper publication. This is a process. This is a event to be completed by IRP or RP. After receipt of the claims, Committee of Kratos are conscious. This is a routine uh, process or CIRP process. A claim was uh, filed before the resolution profession of approximately 47.36 crores by the state tax officer as a juice under the GVAT Limit Act. This said came as a filed beyond time. That is uh, October 22, 2018, the appellant was informed by the RP that the entire amount has been waived off. On December 20, 2018, the resolution plan was challenged at NCLT Ahmedabad bench by the state uh, tax officer that is appellant, praying for the payment set juice on the ground of the sale of a sale tax officer was a secured credit following which the relevant authorities under the IBC has observed as under the NCLT rejected the application made by the appellant as not maintainable. Whatever the sale tax they have filed that is not maintainable and they rejected that one. The NCLAT held that. The appellant failed to file its claim on time. That is the first reason. He is not filed the claim on time. Section 48 of GVAT Act take the precedence of over the Section 53 of the IBC. Therefore, the appellant does not meet the definition of the secured creditor under the Section 3 subsection 30 of read with 331 of the IBC. Further, since the sale tax department filed its claim after the plan, after the resolution plan, had been approved by COC, RP has no jurisdiction to hear it and it was rightfully denied. So, the claim was submitted after the resolution plan is submitted and finalized by the COC, the Apex Court. Point number one, what they have viewed about this case? If the resolution plan excludes statutory dues payable to the government or the government authority, it cannot be said in accordance with the provisions of IBC and thus not binding on the government. That is point one. The adjudicating authority NCLT and the appellate authority have held the claim is a state as related. So the Apex Court viewed that the point one is it cannot be said according to the provisions of the IBC 2000. If the resolution plan excludes the statutory dues payable to the government or government authority, it cannot be said that the accordance with the IBC. Regulation 12 of 2016 deals with the time period for submission of the claim along with the proof as stipulated in the public announcement under Section 15 of IBC. They have clearly mentioned 
So the extent that it deals with the time period, regulation 12 deals with the time period. Stipulated, that is a public announcement and uh, section 15 of the IBC. The time period is, however, not mandatory. It is only directory. That is the point one. Important point is, whatever the time schedules that are given in the code or by way of regulation, that is a mandate, not mandatory, it is only a directive. So the claims can be submitted, but proper authority approval is also required. As a result, adjudicating authority should have rejected such a resolution plan. Once the adjudicating authority, commercial wisdom rested with the CVS. They should not involve or interfere in the commercial wisdom of the Committee of Creators. They can select any resolution plan. Whether the CVS followed all the guidelines or regulations as issued by IBPI from time to time or not, that is to be ensured or not only that one, whether all areas are covered, whether they are justified, the payment to be made to the operational creator, all are to be verified properly. Leave it of the, who is given highest amount, who is given the lowest amount, what is the period of payment, all these things are the different one. So the time period is given and not a mandatory, it is only a directory. As a result, the adjudicating have rejected such a plan. In this case, the adjudicating authority not rejected the plan. Point number two. What is the point number two? Furthermore, because of a section 48 of GVAT is not even with the IBC 2016. It was determined by IBC does not supersede the GVAT. Does not supersede the GVAT. So, further, because of section 48 of GVAT is not uneven. If at all uneven, then only the IBC will supersede the GVAT. It is not uneven. Point number three. Hello. Hello. Oh, sir. Sir. Sir, oh, the previous slide you please show, sir. What is the meaning of not uneven, sir, here? How sir, can uneven, not uneven. Sir. Particularly even uneven. Okay. What are the conditions of uh, the particular X Act and IBC Act is common? Then only it is uh, not uh, uneven. It is even. Okay. If at all uh, X Act uh, is uh, something they are saying something and uh, why are the IBC is something uh, different? Uh, then only IBC will prevail over the other act. Other acts. Okay, okay. Point number three. The resolution plan does not meet the standard of IBC. And a night binding on the state. So the standards, the resolution plan standards, they have to satisfy all the stakeholders. Government is also stakeholder. Government juice is also stakeholder. Workers, employees, operational creator, or the financial creator, all are to be satisfied by the, in the resolution plan. But in the resolution plan, they are giving only preference to certain stakeholders remaining or leave it like that. That is not up to the mark standards. So all resolution plans are to be standardized. And they have to satisfy the, the whatever the norms are there. Point number four. Before it may accept the resolution plan, adjudicating authority must satisfy that uh, fulfills the criteria of uh, section 30, subsection 2 of the IBC. That is a uh, contravene of the any provision of the law time being enforced. Just now, what is uh, the even or uneven? And the resolution plan 
does not meet the requirement of Section 30. The IBC is illegal and will not bind the state. That is uh, the apex authority. They found uh, all these points. Point number five. The Supreme Court went on rule that uh, state is a secured creditor. How? How the state is a secured creditor? Under the IBC, because a security interest created in favor of the GBAT. For that, they have given some explanation. What is that explanation? As a result, just as workers' dues are treated the same way with a secured creditors' dues, therefore, debts owned to the state should be treated equally with the debts owned to the workers under the framework of uh, Section 531B2. What is that? The facts of uh, this is entirely different from people are telling both are similar cases, but the judgment is uh, deferred like that. But in ABJ shipyard also, not that uh, no work, no pay. This is a different, uh, another point, another point. What is that point? ABJ shipyard corporate data was a shipbuilding company that imported various uh, materials for the purpose of uh, the building ships uh, on the regular basis. Some of the goods were stored in the, some of the goods uh, stored in the corporate retail in custom bounded warehouses in Gujarat. And the container uh, freight stations uh, in Maharashtra. So they are having the custom bonded warehouses in Gujarat and the container freight stations in Maharashtra, particularly the ABJ shipyard. When NCLT Ahmedabad issued an order for initiating CARP against a corporate editor, interim resolution claimed that the custody of a warehouse commodities from the Central Board of Indirect Access are requested they do not dispose the or auction of the same. So, actually here, the goods are received. Once the goods are received, the customs uh, duties are to be paid. And once the customs are due, duties are paid, then only they will uh, release the goods. But in the meantime, the company is under uh, CIRP. The IRP also instructed the customs authorities, don't dispose or auction the goods. The following that uh, the particularly the Central Board of uh, Indirect Tax and Customs, that is uh, CBIC, sent a different demand notice to the CD and IRP. Following in the, the following on the particular IRP's uh, demand or letter, they, they 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 have viewed in a different manner the NCLT, point number one. In the light of these developments, the relevant authorities proceed as of the, what is that one? Order of the, the Central Board of Indirect and Customs to transfer the warehouse and item to the liquidator without any condition or protest or payment of the customs duty. They have given the order like that. And point number two, the CBIC at liberty to lodge its claim. Okay, you release the goods, whatever your claim is there, customs claim, you can submit it to the IRP or RP or liquidator with regard to customs duty charges payable on the release of the material, which is the form of our assets of the CD in liquidation. Point number three, the NCLT consider section 238 of IBC and held that a non abstinate clause in the IBC shall have overriding effect on the proceedings of the Customs Act. Because in this case, they clearly told, categorically told, Indeed. IBC will prevail over the.
अदर हम लोग घर में भी करते हैं ना कहीं तो बड़ा हॉल में देखने का इसका आवाज कम आता है तो इसमें ऐसे मजा नहीं आता नहीं ऐसे ही आता है तो मोबाइल से भी समझो मैं लिंक करता हूँ मोबाइल में कैसे होगा उसमें भी ऐसे ऑप्शन मोबाइल का ऑटोमेटिक चल जाता है वहाँ टीवी में जाता है हाँ वो तो ऑटोमेटिक जाएगा वहाँ फेसबुक वगैरह सब जाएगा मैंने कभी चेक नहीं है बट जाता है ऑटोमेटिक तो कंट्रोल और उधर ही सेल लगा है पूरा स्क्रीन तो कंट्रोल वहाँ पे जाता है फर्दर लुकिंग इनटू वाटर Sir, sir, you request that uh, moderator to disable this mic. Ah, okay. Now it was stopped. Sir. So the distribution of the sale of the liquidation of assets shall prevail over the customs act provisions. The NCLT has given in this case point number one. NCLT overruled the verdict of NCLT. Requiring that warehouse commodities are to be released or disposed in accordance with the applicable provisions of the Customs Act. Simply, goods are not to be released. Some rules are there. Once that rules are fulfilled, then only the goods are to be released at the port or airport, which the goods are received from other countries. Point number two. NCLT found that the commodities in the custom bounded warehouse, not the CDs asset, since they are not claimed by the CD after the importation, and the bill of entry for part of the aforementioned products were not clear. For imported goods, bill of entry is compulsory. Once the bill of entry is submitted. Then only the goods are belongs to the corporate data. Till such time, the goods are not belongs to the corporate data. The bill of entry is to be submitted by the particular importer. If at all he availed any loan from the bank, he has to submit to the bill of entry to the bank also. The banks are also to be informed in the Reserve Bank of India. The bill of interest, how many received, how many not received, that data also to be provided by the banks. Once the bill of entry is submitted, then only the ownership of the goods are to be passed on to the importer. Till such time, the goods are not belongs. The goods are not the owner of a, the owner is not the corporate data. NCLT found that. Filing to file the efforts mentioned bill of entry, the importer that is corporate data out of the control of the ownership to the imported groups. NCLT told you release the goods. If at all any customs duties are there, you please claim. NCLT told no, that is uh, your argument is correct, not uh, correct, because here. The bill of entry is one of the important area, and custom customs act some formalities are to be completed. Once the bill of entry is submitted, then only the goods are belongs to the corporate data. Till such time, the ownership is not transferred. Once the ownership is not transferred, that is under the possession of the customs authority, not under the ownership of the corporate data. The a bill of entry is a legal document that is filed by the importer or the custom clearance agents on or before arrival of the import of goods. While a bill of entry is submitted, whatever the importer, particularly the DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade, to import the goods. Whatever the permissions are there, all are to be mentioned in that particular bill of entry. Then only after verifying that one, the customs authority, they will release the goods. In this case also, whatever the argument of a customs authority is there, it appears to be correct. But what was happened? It is submitted that the customs department as a part of customs clearance procedure, the bill of entry. Once this is done, 
the importer will be able to claim ITC input tax credit on the goods. Till such a time, he is not eligible. Point number three. The NCLT held that Customs Act is a, a complete code which provides where goods cannot be released until import duties are paid. But based on the NCLT and NCLAT verdicts, then the apex court is given in a different manner. The apex court they viewed it in a different manner. The point one they viewed is Customs Act and IBC in their own spheres. However, IBC be a 2016 being the more recent statute clearly overrides the Customs Act. That is the old act. This is a new act. Definitely it overrides the earlier act. A bar perusal of a, particularly section 142A of the Customs Act provides that the customs authorities would have the first charge on the assets as per section 142A of the Customs Act First charge in the asset of the particular customs act, except in that particular 142A also, they have mentioned about the recovery of dues, except the cases under section 529A of the Companies Act, comma, Recovery of dues to the Bank and Financial Institution Act 1993, comma, and the Securitization of Reconstruction Act Financial and Enforcement Act and IBC. So here, in the Customs Act itself, Section 142A of the Customs Act is clearly mentioned. They are first charge to recover the claim, whatever the customs duties are there. First charge, but some exceptional. What are the exceptions? One exception is Section 529 of Companies Act, one point. Recovery of dues to banks and financial institutions, okay. 1993, oh. point two. Securitization of assets and financial enforcement security interest two thousand surface two thousand two. And one minute, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, okay. 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 Consultancy. One minute. Challenge consultancy. Dot in. Huh. Oh, so here, section of 142A of the Customs Act, that is important. They have clearly mentioned my dues are first, but the first charge on the assets is not applicable in case, particularly situations like 529A of the company set and 1993 of the recovery of a debt, uh, debts due or surface 2002 and IBC 2016 also. Such an exemption is granted by the Customs Act is likely recognized the Section 238 IBC, which grants IBC overriding over any other elections that may be strange with it. That is the point. Both cases are not similar. Both cases are not similar. 
both are entirely different. Prima facie, everybody is thinking. In Customs Act, you have told that IBC prevail over that particular Customs Act. But in case of Gujarat VAT, you are telling that IBC and this one is not the different and both are no differences are there and there the GVAT is to be treated as a secured creditor like that. Such exemption granted under customs is lightly recognized in section 238 of the IBC, which grants IBC overriding the power over any other list that may be strained with it. Point number two, the Honorable Supreme Court point number two is further more, the Supreme Court recognized that Prior to IBC, multiple statutes resulted in parallel procedures. And one of the goals enacting IBC was to eliminate the dispute between the different legislations. That's fine. Here, the act subsequent, the, the act, even though subsequent uh, uh, the amendments are there. In the amendments also, particularly in the Customs Act, they clearly mentioned about uh, IBC. But uh, the GVAT also, particularly the Gujarat Value Added Tax, it is, uh, that is, both are different cases, different uh, the issues. Since a demand a notification to seek enforcement of custom dues were sent after CIRP was initiated, the Supreme Court held the demand notice to be violated under Section 14 Moratorium and 33.5 of IBC. Section 33, subsection 5 of indicates the liquidation order being passed. No shoot or legal proceedings or shall be initiated against the corporate data. So once they have issued the notice, they have to claim, they have to claim, they should not proceed and uh, they have to submit the claim. Point number three, the Supreme Court has observed the issuance of notice under section 72 Customs Act for non-payment of custom duty falls directly within the scope of uh, initial proceedings of uh, against a corporate data and even during the liquidation process also. The liquidator is tasked with the secured and uh, goods and uh, so on so. That is the custody and the control of the property affects the claim. So, whatever the two cases are entirely different, in this case, particularly ABC Shipyard and uh, the Rainbow Papers, both are entirely different. And both uh, issues are not common issues. And the acts are also different. But in this particular, uh, the ABJ shipyard also, under the Customs uh, Act also, they clearly mentioned about uh, the IPC, particularly Section 142A, the Customs Act also clearly mentioned. The first charge on the assets is uh, for uh, Customs Authority. As per section 142A, except they have mentioned some acts. In that act, IBC is also there. So here, as a result, question whether arises. Customs Authority may issue a notice to sell the items of the Customs Act after liquidation began was raised the answer negatively by the expert. That is a negative. They, are, they should not. The objectives of IBC is finally, after going through this both cases, the objectives are before analyzing the verdicts of the apex court in the said cases, it would be pretended to recollect the objectives and formulation of IBC by our legislators. IBC was introduced in 2016. Resolve claims involving an insolvent company to tax the bad loan problems were affecting the banking system. 
actually today the banks are somewhat happy why because surface 2002 is not that much effective debt recovery tribunals number of cases are dumped or filed and uh, very few cases the recovery plans are happening and uh, ibc also the fear psychosis among the corporate debtor already started particularly the personal guarantor to corporate debtor today whenever the banks are giving a loan they are insisting guarantee of the data director source they are reluctant to, to give once the company is in financial crisis and uh, the bank will file simultaneously the cirp as well as the personal guarantor to corporate debtor the figure psychosis uh, today it is there in the particular the directors and the recovery is also happening some of the cases where uh, the company is in good condition and uh, liquidity problem for short time then they will come to the bank for compromise or uh, they will uh, ask the bank to reschedule or refinance or they are giving uh, they are uh, paying that amount uh, and the compromise settlement or one time settlement uh, are also increasing because on an account of fear psychosis in the minds of the corporate debtor at the initial stages most of the people they may not aware of the consequences of the ibc today most of the borrowers particularly the corporate debtors they are fully aware of the ibc and what are the consequences how once it is mclt has given the order and once the interim resolution professional reported at the company and the earlier directors powers are or lost all these things the picture some of the the promoters they have highlighted to their peers and thereby the information is percolated to most of the promoters about the ibc cases the objectives of the ibc was to put into place comprehensive one stop solution of the insolvency and pave the way of easy of existence in the honest business failures it is a one stop solution and uh, once the ip is appointed the moratorium or interim finance is eligible interim finance also he is eligible to avail and going concern and uh, he is having a full powers uh, to manage the efforts of the company subject to proper approval from the committee of creditors and in the supervision of the adjudicating authority ibc 2016 provide mechanism of a distressed business to resolve the insolvency orderly and in a time bound manner till date on account of various challenges that are facing by the nclt or ncnats the cases are increasing till date the information utility is not fully implemented and the banks are even though it is there in the regulation that whatever the forms the documents all are to be uploaded in the particularly through in, electronically for electronic form only the ex exemption is there for operational creditor and still the nclts are accepting only the physical document not electronic document when some nclts uh, they are always uh, accepting even uh, information utility wide publicity was not happened once that is happening online platform is uh, created and a quick disposal and the volume of uh, transactions will be minimized uh, and the easy of a uh, retrieval of document uh, to the adjudicating authorities uh, and uh, to take the decision uh, instantly without any delay the code overhauled the legal regime of the corporate distress resolution in india replaced with a predictable market lead incentive compliant and a time bound mechanism even today particularly earlier i talked about uh, the irp of a particular uh, the um, builder uh, 
uh, company builders he got his incentive us on the total resolution plan amount or uh, they uh, authorized by ibpa so huge amount of incentive also he got it in the address of a market imperfections and plug the information asymmetric enabling freedom to exit uh, for a commercial entity through corporate and entrepreneurs that is happening the ibc has enacted a critical building block in the india's economy maturity mark today the easy of doing business rank is 63 earlier once upon a time is 142 the india's easy of doing business rank today that is 63 once the cross border insolvency was happened or the group insolvency was introduced or particularly the individual and the partnership also introduced then the 63 becomes 36 also so the one of the particular the reforms are also to be made once the reforms are good and it is friendly to the investors definitely large investments will happen so it is a critical building block india's development to maturity market the first is a resolution, not the recovery, not the recovery. Even today, the committee of creators, the financial creators, always they are looking for the recovery, recovery, recovery. They are always looking for liquidation. They are always looking for uh, their share. But uh, once uh, the recovery they have targeted, it is uh, deemed to be treated that the company is uh, going to be died. The second object is a maximization of wealth of the assets of the corporate data. So the corporate data maximization, even though 180 days are given and extension 90 days or in certain cases dispersal, 60 days are given till so many cases, more than two years, more than three years. Particularly in my case, the personal guarantor to corporate data, the Deccan Chronicle, the directors, till date, the cases are not admitted on account of various reasons. Some of them approached the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court also given the final verdict and till they have also instructed all the NCLTs to dispose of all the cases which are pending. Earlier, some stay is there. Now there is no stay and still it is continuing. Even after two and a half years also, the personal guarantor to corporate data are not admitted means where the problem where the problem is. And the third one is promote us, promote entrepreneurship, availability of the credit and balancing interest. That's why the World Bank clearly told the credit to be safeguarded, the capital to be safeguarded. The credit and the capital, if both are safeguarded, the country will flourish like anything. The credit to be safeguarded means with the help of uh, the surface to or debt recovery tribunal or the IPC. The capital to be safeguarded with the rules and regulations defined by the security exchange board of India. Even today, the prepacked insolvency resolution process, it is not to pick it up a well under one or two cases. Why? Because uh, the publicity, the product futures are not reached to the promoters. Okay, bankers on their own, they do, they are not uh, eligible. The PPIRP to be originated from the corporate data only, not by the operational creator, not by the financial creator, not by the class of creators. But the PPIRP is not uh, picked up. To pick up the PPIRP, the dissemination of information to the promoters, that is very much required. Once it is disseminated, then automatically, one by one, one by one, the PPIRP cases are to be increased. And the third object, promote entrepreneurship, availability of the credit and balancing interest. The order of the objective is unbreakable. Order of the objectives are unbreakable. Particularly, it was a clearly mentioned in a Binani Industries and Bank of Baroda. 
the sum resolution not recovery is the prime objective of the IBIS. Recovery is uh, no, the, not acceptable. Being a IRP or RRP always uh, struggle for resolution plan, resolution plan, resolution plan. The company as a going concern, if at all you are giving into the best promoter's hand, then automatically further growth will happen. Economy will not suffer and GDP will not suffer and employment opportunities will not decrease. All these things are there. So in sum, the resolution and not recovery is the primary objective of IBC. So based on that, the analysis of verdict of Apex code when compared to the rainbow paper or ABJ shipyard, the analysis verdicts of the Apex code is Prior examining the aspect of a primacy of IBC over other statute would be convenient to discuss important issues that is Rainbow Limited, wherein a GVAT claim was rejected by RP was a sales department failed to file the claim on time. And it was filed even after the plan has been approved by COC and following which NCLAT had held, RP has no jurisdiction to hear of. So here, that's why whenever we are handling any proposal, particularly the CIRP process, habit of going through the liability side of the balance, the share capital. If at all unclaimed, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, if at all partly paid share capital is there, we have to recover. Even debtors, some other uh, the IPs, they are not focusing on debtors also. Debtors have to be recovered. We are not talking about, always talking about building a plant and machinery. Debtors is also there. Debtors, uh, we are giving only 30 days credit or 60, 90, and sometimes 120 also. So the data are to be recovered. How many data every month the, the companies are submitting their stock and the book debts to the bank to get the working capital loan? So the data are to be concentrated. Recovery will happen. And that recovery also to be useful for the stakeholders. Partly paid. The liability of the shareholder is uh, up to the share value. So once a partly paid means the remaining amount to be paid uh, in case the company is facing problem. Now the company is facing problem and once it is uh, out of uh, 10 rupees if you paid uh, 3 rupees, the 7 rupees to be recovered. Once it is uh, recovered, it is helpful, helpful for uh, waterfall mechanism or appropriation of payments. So on time is very, very important. That's why whenever I am telling about the CARP, it is a project, project to be completed within the scheduled time. The scheduled time is 180 days or the extinction of 90. Some of the activities are parallelly we can stop. There is no harm. Parallelly, that is the deadlines given by the IBC. It doesn't mean we should not start early. Valuation and information memorandum, all these things are to be prepared at the earliest. And we have to watch, we have to verify the books also. As an IP, whenever I am going to any unit, first of all, all records, manual records are not available. All are electronic records. When, if at all I am asking a uh, assets book register or stock register or data register or credit register or shareholders register or fixed assets register, uh, no registers are available. All are on RAM, random access memory. So once I reported, uh, immediately I will ask the systems administrator whatever the user ID password is there, that is to be blocked. That is to be changed. Otherwise, some of the unscrupulous persons, they will very, they will change, they will erase the records also. There, 
it is very difficult uh, to prepare the plan, the balance sheets also. Whatever, whether it is called as a approximate balance or projected balance sheet like that. So, on time is possible, subject to involvement. No doubt. IBC proceedings is a time bomb, but needs to borne in mind the government dues are the public money. And the RP is duty bound carefully peruse all records of the CD. That's why in the rainbow paper also, Supreme Court finally told. So RP has to verify, okay. Not submitted in time. Even after resolution also submitted. Brought to the notice of the adjudicating authority. Second one is, what is the problem in verifying the records? Proactive approach is also required. Because later on, this type of rainbow or other problems should not arise. So whenever it is brought to the notice of the apex court, then what is a, what is a particular uh, the functioning of IP? They will uh, go through the role of IP, the code of uh, IBC. All these things they will uh, discuss in detail. And if at all any lack, you know, if at all any issues are there, Can't hear you, sir. So we can't hear you. You are paused. So different departments are there, particularly sale tax or corporate tax, a different department. They may observe, they may not observe, particularly the public announcements, even though it is there in the website, corporate website. And public money means we have to give importance. Once the public money is not there, how the development activities will happen? So whatever the public money is there, that public money is also to be Some uh, other side system problem is there, sir. Not on my side. Some system problem is there. Okay. So here, what I told is uh, particularly the public money. We should not leave it. Some of the people, particularly, I'm talking to avoid the various taxes, the corporate data for filing. Uh, the the cases under uh, IBC under section ten, which is not correct, which is not correct. So the duty bound carefully peruse all records of the CD to ensure that while finalizing the information memorandum. That's why I clearly mentioned about the importance of information memoranda at the initial stages. So the apex court also pointed out that the RP is a duty bound careful peruse all the records of the CD and ensure that while finalizing the information memorandum all the outstanding comprehensive we accounted for. Since one of the primary constraints of the information memorandum is bring on all records of all assets and the liabilities of the corporate. <clears throat> so one of my friends, one friend, uh, uh, the one of my friends, he told, I received only four claims once, I have submitted a
So we can't hear you. Sir, we can't hear you. Is there anybody from ICSI IAP? Logging again. See, we can't hear. Anjali, uh, Anjali, I think uh, connected. He there is a problem. Yeah, he he is going to log in again. There is some issue with his connection. Correct, correct. Shiva, sir, are you there? You are not audible, sir. Oh. <laughs> so, one of the primary functions of the information memorandum is to bring on record of all assets and liabilities. That is very important. That's the first uh, I have given uh, the importance of information memorandum, importance of the reading of the balance sheet, importance of all assets and the liabilities are to be accounted for in the information memorandum, then only we will get the best resolution plan. Okay. If at all it is not a claim, it doesn't mean uh, we don't want to take the amount from the company. Whatever the claims are there, you have to mention. And brought to the notice of the prospective resolution applicant. If at all uh, that is a disappear or not mentioned, uh, then it will be a problem later on. That being said, all creditors, financial and operation, including government authorities, need to demonstrate promptness, be vigilant, not lie in the statute of the continuous intra inactivity of the support. the claims to the RP in order to facilitate timely conclusion of the IBC procedures. So here. The problem free of a CARP, problem free of a, the liquidation will happen once we are following in total of all the regulations that are framed by the IBBA, not only that one, from time to time, whatever the judicial pronouncements are there, all pronouncements are to be read on the for that ICSI, IAP, they have issued the particular, the almost a daily, almost a daily, that is a learning curves 
MEARNING learning curves. The learning curves are very, very useful. The case, the brief judgment, and one or two paragraphs of the judgment. It won't take much time. Max to max, it will take five minutes. It is almost a half page and uh, nearly more than uh, 2,000 uh, learning curves are there. In each and every case, uh, some uniqueness is there. That's why it is a learning curve, it is there. And once the learning curves are updated by the insolvency professional of ICSI, IAP, definitely he will become the all-rounder. He will become the knowledgeable person. He is a, definitely he become a, a master in IBC 2016. So far, the issue of a primacy of IBC what were the other statutes concerned? In the ABG shipyard, the Apex Court has clearly held that IBC being more recent statute. Clearly overrides the customs act. They have clearly mentioned, even the customs act after it was a clearly mentioned about the impact, the they accept the way they have mentioned about the Companies Act or a Surface Act or IBC Act like that. The verdict of the case, Rainbow Papers Limited, further analyzed on the following lines. The Apex Board has held that Section 48 of a GVAT is not contrary to the inconsistency to the 53 of the approach. If at all inconsistency, if at all it is uh, contrary, then only IBC will provide. Otherwise, uh, IBC will not provide. Section 48 of the GVAT Act reads as one, not withstanding anything contrary contained in any law, for the time being in force, or any amount payable by the dealer or any other person on account of tax, interest or penalty, which is liable to pay the government shall be first to charge on the property of such a dealer as a case may be such a person. Section 48, they clearly mentioned about this one. So here, if at all any difference is there, then only IBC will provide. Then otherwise not. In view of the book, the Apex Court has observed the state is a secured creditor under the GVAT Act. Section 3, subsection 30 of the IBC defines secured creditor means a creditor in favor of whom security is created. Such a security interest could be created by operation of laws. Operation of law. Today, security is created to the bank as a political security under transfer of property acts, transfer of a property act, particularly hypothecation. Hypothecation is also security created. It is defined under Surface Act 2002. Before that, hypothecation definition is also not there. Whether it is a lien or pledge or assignment or the hypothecation or mortgage, all are different statutes are there. The definition of the secured creditor in IBC does not exclude any government or government other. So, under section 53. Sir, may I ask one question, please? Yes, sir, sir. Sir, uh, uh, there was, uh, I think, petition filed for uh, revision uh, before the Honorable Supreme Court. Uh, for on hmm. this, uh, you know, decision. Uh, so, is uh, has that been disposed or still, uh, you know, that is under uh, a sub judice? Sir, sir, I could not catch your point, sir. Sir, on this issue uh, of hmm. GVAT, uh, you know, this uh, the GVAT. state being the secure creditor, ah. I think there was uh, one uh, petition was filed before the Honorable Supreme Court for revision of this judgment. Uh, you know. Um, uh, so, what is the status of that? That, that uh, they, so far, uh, 
that uh, no hearing, nothing was happened on that particular distance. So far, to my knowledge, is concerned. Okay, nothing has happened. Yes, 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 sir. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. It needs uh, highlighting the interference of the apex court pertains in the era of uh, liquidation system that uh, preceded uh, the IBC. When government dues are previously given high priority in relation to all outstanding uh, debts of CBD, CD, that is there in the company act. Company act in liquidation also, the government uh, duties are prior. Whereas uh, under the IBC, payment of government dues much lower priority under waterfall mechanism provided under section 53. So the edict of the apex court under uh, Section 53 so and so did want to the secretary, including state under the JVAC also. If so, what are the government duties that are provided under lower priority? That is a question mark. Government duties, what are the government duties lower priority? Why they have mentioned in the waterfall mechanism? What are those items? What is this item? This item, they are telling that it is a sacred crater. What are those items that is mentioned in the waterfall mechanism? Any amount of the central government, whatever it is, there, two years, sir. Reads as follows. Any amount of just to the central government or state government, including the amount received on the consolidated fund, or consolidated fund in respect of a whole or any part of the period of two preceding years or liquidation commencement today, are quite clearly juice GVAT Act should fall under this code, have lower priority over the debts due to the security greater. The apex support view is section 48 GVAT Act not contrary. Okay, GVAT is also comes under this section only. Waterfall mechanism correct. But uh, the GVAT Act they are commenting, but still it is pending. Uh, how they can view this case, uh, we don't know. Contrary or the consistent with the 53 of the IBC, that is section 238 of uh, that would be regard, disregarded does not supersede the GVAT, despite our more recent statute. To conclude, government dues are public money. And the RP is a duty bound to carefully reuse all records of the city and ensure all finalizing the information. Under section 29, all outstanding dues are comprehensively accounted for. Whether it is a debtors or outstanding expenses or outstanding, uh, suppose I take for example, prepaid expenses. We have paid prepaid. If the company next year, so and so, yes, we are uh, advanced prepayment is there. Once the company is not going to utilize that one, you have to recover. Sometimes the insurance, today the insurance is not on in the yearly renewals, sometimes five years, ten years. So if at all the company is not going to utilize that insurance policy for the next ten years, whatever the amount is there, recover. Then that amount is useful for approach. It may not be a small amount, particularly on the assets of the company we are insuring. So the information memorandum is the vital document to satisfy the stakeholders, to maximization of assets, and to give a clear picture about the company profile, the information memorandum that time to be spent by the insolvency professional should be The attention is required from there only, but for preparation of information, the valuation reports have to be properly valued. And then only the quality of information memorandum will happen. Once the quality of information memorandum will happen, then the decision to be left to the resolution, resolution and the applicant whether to take or not to take human decision. 
Under the liquidation system, the preceded, uh, the IBC government users previously given high priority in relation to all outstanding of the date of the due CD, whereas IBC, the payment of the juice has a lower priority under form package. Moreover, Section 238 of IBC, in place of clearly states that provisions of the code have override the loss, would be appropriate for all the stakeholders. Read a line of the code rather than reading in between the lines. So this is the same verdict is given in other judgments also. This is a in brief about the, uh, the judicial pronouncement, particularly the Apex Court. So thank you very much for uh, giving me an opportunity by the ICSI, Insolvency Professionals. And uh, I wish you all the best to all professionals for the new financial year 2024-25. Thank you very much. Thank you to all. And good night Thank to you. Thank you, sir. Before concluding, only one request, sir. Sir, the sir. PPT, what you prepared, you please uh, share in the chat box, sir. Ah, also, sir. your cell number and the email ID. Ah, sir, sir. I shared it to Madam also. She will circulate with all the papers, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.